Hey guys, all right, so I'm gonna do another lunchtime video today. And I'm doing my best Brian Denlinger impression because I'm in the woods. Um, but I wanna talk about Ben Shapiro today and a false doctrine that he has been perpetuating that Jesus Christ was some kind of political rebel or that his goal was to overthrow the Roman government and that's why he was essentially crucified. The Bible couldn't be more clear that the truth is the exact opposite of what Ben Shapiro teaches. And it's so funny how these Jews and people like Ben Shapiro and Joe Rogan, they'll believe anybody but the apostles and the New Testament. They'll believe anything but the Bible. And Ben Shapiro claims to believe the Old Testament. Ben Shapiro does not believe the Old Testament because Jesus Christ said, if you believe Moses, you believe me. But he said, you don't even believe his writings. So how would you believe my words? No wonder you don't believe me. So Ben Shapiro is lying. And I think he's probably just flat out lying and he's not even deceased, deceived. He'll always quote Maimonides, you know, Maimonides said this, and Maimonides said this, and oh, I'm Ben Shapiro, you know, most popular conservative podcast. Why will you believe Maimonides over the, the witness of the apostles who all testified of the same thing, multiple, you know, a dozen plus men, and then even more disciples and, and apostles? Why wouldn't you take their witness and the witness of Jesus Christ and the witness of the Old Testament that points to Christ, but you'll take some Jewish philosopher, you know, anything to deny Jesus Christ. To me, it's amazing how men truly love darkness rather than, than light because their deeds are evil, you know, that they truly won't come to the light. I mean, it's amazing. Why wouldn't you want to come to the light? Have you ever just read the words of Jesus Christ? Have you ever listened to them at all and you reject them? It's unbelievable to me. But the Bible teaches the exact opposite. Jesus Christ was not a political rebel. Jesus Christ was not some modern day Che Guevara. He was not some modern day, um, even a George Washington or a Thomas Jefferson or uh, some revolutionary. He is the son of God. And the Bible says his kingdom is not of this world. Jesus could have easily led a revolt against the Romans if he wanted to. Jesus Christ had had uh, the the uh, the love and the why is the word escaping me? He had the loyalty of many many people. Thousands of people were loyal to Jesus Christ and believed in him. If he wanted to use his powerful words, his authoritative words, in order to lead a revolt against the Romans, he could have easily done so, but that's not what he did because that's not what he came to do. The Bible says in John 18, in verse four, after Jesus was arrested and uh, delivered to Pilate, the Bible says, Jesus therefore knowing all things that should come upon him went forth and said unto them, whom seek ye? I'm sorry, this is before, this is before he's gonna be delivered to Pilate. Uh, that's, that's a different scripture that I'm gonna show you. So this is uh, John 18, right after Judas um, betrays him. So Jesus said, whom seek ye? He said to the, to the people who came to arrest him, they answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said unto them, I am he. And Judas also, which betrayed him, stood with them. As soon then as he had said unto them, I am he, they went backward and fell to the ground. Then asked he them again, whom seek ye? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I have told you that I am he. If therefore ye seek me, let these go their way. That the saying might be fulfilled, which he spake of them, which thou gavest me, I have lost none. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it. Now this is important. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and smote the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. Then said Jesus unto Peter, put up thy sword into thy sheath, the cup which my father hath given me, shall I not drink it? So what do we see when the rubber meets the road here and Jesus Christ is face to face with his, uh, the people who want to arrest him and his arresters and his and his captors. And he has the opportunity to fight. And one of his disciples pulls out a sword and is willing to fight to the death physically for him. What does he say? Jesus Christ says, no, put up your sword into your sheath. This is something that I must do. Now, if Jesus was some political rebel, you're telling, why was he, you know, he has this, this prime opportunity to fight. It's his disciples versus versus the enemy, why wouldn't he fight them right then and there? Why wouldn't he encourage uh, Peter as his as his captain to, 
you know, why wouldn't he give him marching orders? And why wouldn't he command the rest of his disciples to fight the same fight? That's because Jesus Christ was not some political uh, revolter who was trying to rebel against the Roman Empire. That's a lie. And by the way, Ben Shapiro, the Bible is clear over and over. It was the Jews, the Jews that crucified Jesus Christ. It was the Jews who yelled, crucify him, crucify him. And Pilate said, why? What evil hath he done? And they said, crucify him. And he said, I'm free of the blood of this just person. And they said, his blood be on us and on our children. That's what the Jews said. And to this day, God has held them accountable for that and honored the words that came out of their mouths on that day. The Jews killed Jesus Christ, not the Romans because he tried to rebel against them. In fact, Pilate practically begged the Jews to let Jesus go, to allow him to let Jesus go. He didn't want to kill Jesus. He didn't want to crucify Jesus. He knew that Jesus was at the very least a good man. And you know what? Pilate even would testify, you know, he had a testimony in his heart. He knew that what Jesus Christ was saying was the truth and that he was the son of God. Because the Bible says when he heard that the people were saying he's the son of God, he feared greatly. He was very scared of that because he didn't want to kill the son of God. But you know what? The Jews did want to kill the son of God and they did kill the son of God. And it's like Sarah Silverman said. Sarah Silverman was in the news lately. She's all scared because some preacher preached against her and how wicked she was because she came out one day, you know, and made a joke about, oh, I would kill Jesus again. If I had the chance, I'd kill Jesus again, him in his sandals or whatever. But then, you know, when she's held accountable for it, for what she said, she's like, oh, it was just a joke. It was just a joke. Okay, why do you think it's in her heart to joke and mock about that? Do you think any comedian who is even a decent person would ever make such a blasphemous, horrific statement? That's what Sarah Silverman is a Jew and she meant it. She is one of the Jews who would have killed Jesus and said, his blood be on us and on our children. And Ben Shapiro is the same way. And the reason that Ben Shapiro is so adamant about, huh, well, Jesus just wanted to, to lead a political revolt against the Romans. That's because that's in his heart. That's what he wants the Christ to be. That's why he's so into politics. He wants to be king. Ben Shapiro thinks that he is the secret king of the world when he's really just a little sniveling, you know, gamma beta male or whatever he is. Yeah, he's not even interesting to listen to. And silly Christians need to stop listening to Ben Shapiro. Why would you want to listen to anything somebody has to say who rejects Jesus Christ? If any man love not the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be anathema maranatha. It's not like Ben Shapiro is simply deceived or lost. Ben Shapiro has been delivered the word of God and the Torah. Ben Shapiro knows what the Old Testament says. Ben Shapiro has access by heritage to the word of God and it testifies of the Christ that he rejects and that's why he's so wicked. That's why he, if he can, gets, he must get saved. I mean, it would be, imagine a great testimony that would be if someone like Ben Shapiro became born again. But you know what? He's blinded. He's blind and there's a veil over his eyes. And the reason he wants to accuse Jesus Christ of being some modern day Che Guevara is because that's what he wants to be. That's what he wants the Christ to be. And that's what the Jews think the Christ is. And that's not what the Christ is. The Christ is the son of God. First, he must come to be the savior of the world. First, he had to come to be the lamb of God. First, he had to come to lay down his life a ransom for many and to seek and save that which was lost. He had to humble himself and be, become obedient to the father in all things and even obedient to his own government. He didn't even care. He said, fine. He even paid taxes. Let's look at that. Jesus even paid taxes. Let's look at this. Uh, there's, there's several scriptures like this, but let's look at the uh, one with Peter in, uh, in Matthew chapter 17. The Bible says, and when they were come to Capernaum, they that received tribute money came to Peter. Tribute money is, means they were coming to receive taxes. He came to Peter and said, Doth not your master pay tribute? So they said, Does Jesus pay taxes or not? He saith, Yes. And when he was and when he was come into the house, Jesus prevented him, saying, What thinkest thou, Simon? Of whom do the kings of the earth take custom or tribute? Of their own children or of strangers? Peter saith unto him, Of strangers. Jesus saith unto him, Then are the children free. Notwithstanding, lest we should offend them, go thou to the sea and cast an hook and take up the fish that first cometh up. And when thou hast opened his mouth, 
thou shalt find a piece of money that take and give unto them for me and thee. So what do we see from Jesus here? Long story short, Jesus basically says, look, we shouldn't have to pay these taxes right now. It's wrong. It's not right for them to be charging us this tribute. But you know what? I don't want to offend them and I don't have some political battle to fight. I want to pay the taxes. And that's exactly what he did. And he committed a miracle, committed a miracle. He, he, uh, he performed a miracle that uh, basically, you know, they just found the, the tax money in a, in a fish's mouth. And by the way, God knows that taxes really strain us and, and, and grieve us. And, you know, uh, you know, my buddy, Mike, Mike Michelle, he's, you know, and I've heard him talk about this and we've all talked about it. Like, man, the government strangles my paycheck. They take so much of my paycheck, but God is able to uh, make up for that for us. God is able to help us pay taxes and help us to prosper. Nevertheless, even if our government is, uh, has a stranglehold on us in that way. Now, also, when the Pharisees came to tempt Jesus, because these Jews, these Pharisees were constantly trying to tempt Jesus. They were trying to trick Jesus, trip him up in his words, get him to say something that would get him in trouble. And he always baffled them with his cleverness and his wisdom every single time without fail. That's why they wanted to kill them, to kill Jesus, because they were envious of Jesus. And even Pilate knew that the Jews delivered Christ, uh, Christ to be killed because they were envious. Because instead of loving their savior, they envied him. And they wanted to be him and they wanted what he had and they wanted his power and they wanted his influence and they wanted money and they wanted to sit in the high seats and they wanted to sit in the, the, the chief places and they wanted what only belongs to Christ. And that's why they killed him. So they came to Jesus and they said, um, you know, is it lawful to, you know, to pay uh, taxes to Caesar? And uh, so they were trying to get Jesus to speak against paying taxes so that they could go to Caesar, that they could go to the authorities and say, Jesus Christ is speaking. Uh, Jesus of Nazareth is, is preaching and teaching against paying taxes. Well, what did Jesus say? He said, he looked at the coin and he said, well, whose superscription is on the coin? And they said, well, it's Caesar's superscription. You know, the same way that we have George Washington's superscription on the, on the quarter or, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, they said, well, Caesar's face is on it. And Jesus said, I don't care about your taxes. He said, give to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, but give to God the things that are God's. And they were like, wow, this man is just so wise. So instead of, uh, instead of loving him and gravitating towards him after that, what do they do? They want to kill him. It's like, unbelievable what man can do to himself and it's the reason it's so it's baffling is because even though god the bible teaches orchestrates people's delusions and he'll send them along that road of delusion if they choose to go down it however they have made their bed for themselves they're the ones that did it to themselves now god will kind of like give them a little push off the edge if that's the way because they're going that way anyway so he just helps them along he they asked and they receive they asked for delusion they asked for lies. They asked to live an eternity without God and to die in eternity forever without God. They asked for it. They asked for these delusions. So God gives them to him. And Jesus says, look, pay your taxes. That is the teaching of the Bible. And look, we can, there's nothing wrong with having a discourse and talking about these things and making our, uh, in supplications known unto God that, you know, we want to live peaceably and we're being, you know, drained and with these taxes and everything and we're losing our rights. Please help us, God. And it's okay to talk about these things and to, um, you know, do what's necessary in your community to retain your freedom. However, that is not the overwhelming message of the New Testament. The only time Jesus took on the government is when it was for some spiritual purpose. It was when the father wanted him to. It wasn't because he in his heart wanted to just rebel and be king. Jesus said his kingdom is not of this world. If his kingdom was of this world, he could have had it. If Jesus wanted his kingdom to be on this world 2,000 years ago, he could have done it and he could have orchestrated it. He, would have been the he could have been the most powerful orator to ever live. He could have been the best war general to ever live. 
he could have been the greatest politician and unifier of the people that ever lived politically. But is that what he did? No, because he's the son of God and his kingdom is not of this world. His kingdom is in heaven and the kingdom of Christ will come when it comes. And it will not come when the Jews want it to come. And in fact, the Jews will never be allowed to experience it as Jews. They must believe on the Lord Jesus Christ if they want their kingdom so bad. Even after Jesus rose from the dead, even after Jesus rose from the dead in Acts chapter 1, in verse 6, what does the Bible say? You know, if anything now, Jesus has defeated death. He's conquered the grave. He's, he's risen again. He's swallowed up death in victory. So now, if anything, yeah, so now it's time to start slaying centurions, right? And fighting the Romans and deposing Caesar, right? Wrong. This is what the Bible says. Acts 1, 6. The Bible says, When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, Jesus, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? So they're saying, okay, Jesus, you're risen again now. This is amazing. You died and rose again. We understand now. Now you're going to, uh, we're going to take the kingdom back, right? And, you know, we're going to, we're going to retain our, we're going to get our sovereignty back from the Romans. Huh? huh? And Jesus said, no. What did he say? He said unto them, it, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. So we see Jesus saying, like, look, just focus on the spiritual things. This is clearly always has been the Jews' problem. And that's why the Jews today are just the spiritual ancestors of the Pharisees, the same way I as a Baptist in my lineage spiritually goes all the way back to Jesus Christ and the apostles, the Jews, their lineage goes all the way back to the Pharisees. And in fact, it goes all the way back to Cain, who was of that wicked one who slew his brother because his works were evil and his brother's works were righteous. They're of Cain. The, the Jesus said, you're of your father, the devil, he said to the Jews. And look, the Jews must be saved and get off this idea that well, the Messiah in Judaism is a lot different than the Messiah in Christianity. And, you know, we don't believe that God, you know, becomes incarnate and becomes a man. To us, that, well, no one cares what you think, Jew Ben Shapiro. What does the Bible say the Christ is? Read Isaiah 53 and stop lying to yourself and believe it, or you will burn in hell forever, Ben Shapiro. What else? The Jews clearly thought, even the apostles and the disciples thought, you know, it must be pretty soon that the kingdom of Christ is coming, that the kingdom of God is coming. It's coming, right? Soon? No, they were wrong. And the Jews to this day are wrong. And they will not inherit the kingdom of God. They will not see the kingdom of God if they don't believe on Christ. Arrogant, pompous, religious, just daft, satanic religion. You know, fools complete fools for rejecting the Christ. How and why? Anyway, I hope I've proved myself. You know, I talked about a lot more stuff than I thought I was gonna, and there were some scriptures that I wanted. To, we could go to more scriptures. Jesus Christ, the bottom line, is the Son of God. His kingdom is in heaven, and one day he will set up a kingdom on this earth and rule and reign for a thousand years with a rod of iron, and he'll dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. You know, all those who hate him. And, you know, if we keep his works unto the end and we, um, I believe it says in Revelation, if we keep his works unto the end, we will reign the nations with him and we'll dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel with a rod of iron, just like him, just like was, just like was delivered to him of his father. Jesus will deliver that to us. So Ben Shapiro is wrong. Don't fall for this garbage. Jesus was not some modern, you know, some old time Che Guevara. That's not who he was. Jesus Christ is the son of the living God. Jesus Christ is God manifest in the flesh. Under the son he saith, thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is a scepter of thy kingdom.